On June 30, 1908, in a remote corner of Siberia, the sky exploded. A massive blast, hundreds of times more powerful than the atomic bomb at Hiroshima, flattened over 772 square miles of forest. Eyewitnesses were knocked off their feet 40 miles away. But when the first expedition finally reached the site almost two decades later, they found something that made no sense. There was no impact crater. So, if nothing hit the ground, what really happened over Tunguska? This is the largest impact event in Earth's recorded history. But more than a century later, it's still a mystery that science can't completely solve, sparking bizarre theories and questions we still don't have answers for. The morning of June 30th, 1908, started out quiet near the Podkamanaya Tunguska River. But at around 7.14 a.m., that peace was shattered. A fireball so bright some said it looked like a second sun tore across the sky. One farmer, a man named S. Semenov, was at a trading post about 40 miles from the blast. He said he saw the sky split in two and a huge fire appear. Then came a wave of heat so intense he felt like his shirt was on fire. The blast threw him several feet and knocked him out. When he came to, a deafening crash was echoing everywhere as the ground shook beneath him. And this wasn't just a local event. The explosion was heard hundreds of kilometers away, and the shockwave was so strong it was picked up by seismic instruments all the way in Europe. For the next few nights, the sky over Europe and Asia had an eerie glow. It was so bright that people in Scotland and Sweden could reportedly read the newspaper outside in the middle of the night. The damage to the landscape was apocalyptic. An estimated 80 million trees were wiped out across an area of 830 square miles. That's bigger than the city of London. The blast energy was later estimated to be somewhere between 5 and 20 megatons of TNT, like a major hydrogen bomb. An invisible hammer had struck the earth, but because the area was so remote and Russia was in political turmoil, the world was left in the dark for years. The mystery was left to fester in that silent, flattened forest. The first scientist to really sink his teeth into the Tunguska puzzle was a Russian mineralogist named Leonid Kulik. He heard stories about the blast years later and became convinced a giant meteorite had hit the Earth. He even hoped to salvage its iron for Soviet industry. He tried to get to the site in 1921, but the brutal, unforgiving wilderness a land of swamps and forests with no roads, stopped him in his tracks. It wasn't until 1927, nearly 20 years after the explosion, that Kulik finally reached the blast zone. He and his team, led by local Evenki hunters, pushed through incredible hardship, sure they were about to find a massive impact crater. But when they finally got to the epicenter, what they found was much, much weirder. There was no crater. Instead, they saw a scene of bizarre destruction. In the middle of it all, in a zone about 26 feet wide, was a forest of telegraph poles. The trees were still standing, but they were scorched and totally stripped of their branches and bark. It looked like a giant fiery force had blasted down from directly overhead. Spreading out from there for dozens of miles, all the other trees were knocked over in a huge radial pattern, like the spokes of a wheel all pointing away from the center. It was a perfect bullseye, but with no impact. Kulik was stumped. He spent years mapping the fallen trees and desperately searching for a single piece of the meteorite he was so sure he'd find. He even drained a bog he thought was hiding the crater, but found nothing but an old tree stump at the bottom. The evidence didn't add up. The blast was real, the destruction was undeniable, but the body was missing. Kulik's detective story had led him to a crime scene with no weapon, leaving a question that would puzzle scientists for the next century. How do you have an impact without an impact? Kulik's baffling discovery kicked off decades of debate. With no definitive proof, the theories started flying, from the scientific to the straight-up science fiction. The leading scientific theory, and the one most scientists agree on today, is the asteroid airburst. The idea is that a stony asteroid, maybe 164 to 262 miles across, slammed into Earth's atmosphere at a crazy speed, 
something like 34,176 miles per hour. The heat and pressure from that entry became so immense that the rock catastrophically blew itself apart while it was still high up, about 16 to 32 feet in the air. This mid-air explosion would have sent all its energy down in a massive shockwave, flattening the forest without anything solid ever hitting the ground. This explains the missing crater and the weird telegraph pole trees. But then, in 2013, we saw it happen. A much smaller 20-meter asteroid exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia. It was caught on thousands of cameras, showing a brilliant fireball followed by a shockwave that shattered windows and injured over 1,500 people. And just like Tunguska, the Chelyabinsk meteor left no major crater. It was a perfect, smaller-scale replay that showed exactly how an airburst works, giving huge support to the leading Tunguska theory. But here's where it gets strange again. The theory isn't a perfect fit. If a stony asteroid exploded, you'd expect to find at least some larger leftover fragments on the ground. To this day, no significant meteoritic debris has ever been confirmed. That nagging lack of evidence has kept the door open for other ideas. A popular alternative is the comet hypothesis. A comet is basically a big, dirty snowball of ice and dust. Proponents say a small comet would have completely vaporized when it hit the atmosphere, which explains why there are no fragments. This theory could also explain the glowing skies over Europe, which might have been caused by ice crystals from the comet's tail spreading through the upper atmosphere. The problem is, a fragile body like a comet would have probably broken up much higher in the atmosphere, and it's not clear it could have produced a shockwave powerful enough to do that much damage on the ground. Then, in 2020, a wild new theory popped up, the grazing iron asteroid. This model suggests the object wasn't stone or ice, but a much tougher iron asteroid, maybe up to 656 feet wide. Instead of heading straight down, it entered the atmosphere at a really shallow angle, essentially skipping off of it like a stone on water. It would have torn through the upper atmosphere for hundreds of kilometers, creating the massive shockwave that flattened the trees and then shot back out into space to continue orbiting the sun. This would explain the long path eyewitnesses described, the lack of a crater, and why we haven't found any pieces. Of course, a mystery this good is going to attract some outlandish ideas. People have blamed everything from an exploding pocket of natural gas to a tiny black hole or a speck of antimatter. And you guessed it, some believe it was a crashed alien spaceship, a theory that feeds on the lack of a simple, natural explanation. These fringe ideas don't have any real evidence, but the fact that they're still around shows just how much Tunguska has captured our imagination. More than a hundred years after the sky blew apart over Siberia, the Tunguska event is still stuck somewhere between known fact and total mystery. The evidence overwhelmingly points to a cosmic cause, something from space met a very violent end. The leading theory, an asteroid airburst like the one in Chelyabinsk, explains most of the facts pretty well. It accounts for the incredible energy, the flattened forest, and that all-important missing crater. And yet, it's not a closed case. The complete lack of confirmed big fragments from the object is a stubborn loose end that keeps scientists arguing. It's why credible alternatives, like the grazing iron asteroid or a vaporized comet, are still on the table. And it's why the mystery will likely continue to fascinate us. The truth is, we may never know for sure what happened. What we do know is that on June 30th, 1908, Earth had a very close call. If that object had been a bit bigger, made of stronger stuff, or had arrived just a few hours later, it could have exploded over a major city in Europe, causing destruction that's hard to even imagine. Tunguska was a terrifying reminder that the solar system can be a cosmic shooting gallery, and we're in the line of fire. It was a wake-up call that contributed to modern planetary defense initiatives, like NASA's DART mission, which are designed to track and one day push these cosmic threats out of the way. The mystery of Tunguska transformed from a strange event in Siberia into a global lesson on our own vulnerability in a vast and sometimes violent universe. So, I have to ask, 
What do you think really happened in Tunguska? An exploding asteroid? A comet? A grazing piece of iron? Or something else entirely? Let me know your theory in the comments. And if you love exploring the world's greatest unsolved mysteries, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next investigation. Thanks for watching.